So the reason why this is important for investment banking interviews is because every technical question that they could possibly ask you comes back to the three financial statements at its core foundation. Hey guys, if you like the content on this episode today, I want you to go and click the subscribe button to make sure that you get all of our future episodes as well because we're putting out multiple episodes every single week to help you with the advice that you need to get into the top investment banks in the world. Okay, so I want to make sure that you don't miss out on any of it. Now, today, what I'm going to be talking about is the three financial statements and why they're important for investment banking interviews. Okay, now, first, let's start with what are the three financial statements? All right. So there's the income statement, there's the cash flow statement, and there's the balance sheet. The income statement, it shows how much profit or losses a business has generated during a specified period of time. Okay. Usually it's over a quarter, which is three months, uh, or otherwise it's typically annual, which is for an entire year. Right now, the income statement will show how much revenue the company has generated from selling their products and or services, and then subtract out all of their various expenses to get to a net income or a net profit number, okay? Of course, if the expenses are greater than the revenue that's generated, then there wouldn't be any profits and you would record losses instead, right? So if a business loses money for an extended period of time and is not able to raise more capital from investors and bring more cash in, then uh, it will most likely go out of business. Okay, so that's the income statement, which is probably the statement that you have to be the most familiar with, to be honest, for these investment making interviews, okay? Second statement is the cash flow statement. This one is similar to the income statement, but instead of showing how much profit or losses are generated during you know a period of time, like a quarter or a year, it shows how much cash actually came in or out of the business instead, okay? So in other words, it shows your change in cash, right? You're changing your cash balance and where that cash came from or where that cash went, okay? So you might be wondering, well, what's the difference between this and the income statement, right? What's the difference, what's the difference between how much cash is coming in or out of the business versus how much profit or losses are being generated? Because they sound kind of one and the same, right? So although your net profit on the income statement is often a good proxy for how much cash the business generated or lost, it actually includes certain non-cash expenses such as depreciation and amortization, among other things, okay? It also, the income statement will exclude certain expenses that are not recorded um, on the income statement. So for example, capital expenditures being the most obvious one because those expenses, um, they need to be allocated over multiple years uh, and or sometimes those there are expenses that are not tax deductible, right? And so the income statement actually allows you to calculate your pre-tax income. Uh, so if something doesn't affect your taxes, it wouldn't show up on your income statement, right? So uh, the cash flow statement, even though it does use net income as the starting point, because the net income is a good proxy for the cash flow, uh, it, it it uses net income as the first line and then it adds or subtracts other cash inflows and other cash outflows that haven't been accounted for on the income statement, okay? That gets you to a true change in cash number for that period of time, okay? So that's the cash flow statement. Now, the cash flow statement is important because sometimes they'll ask you uh, this one interview question, in fact, where they say, hey, if you can only look at a company based on one statement, what company would you want to look at? And a lot of people say income statement, but actually you want to look at the cash flow statement because at the end of the day, cash is king. How much cash that's com actually coming into the business or how much cash is actually leaving the business, that's ultimately what matters the most, right? Because eventually if you run out of cash, you don't have a business, right? So that's the second statement. And then the third and final statement is the balance sheet. Okay. So you can think of the balance sheet as a snapshot of a company's net worth. Okay. So for example, if you were to look at your own personal balance sheet, if there was such a thing, um, and you were to look at your own net worth, you probably would add up all of the assets that you own, whether that's cash that you have in a bank account, any investments that you have, if you own stocks or crypto or, you know, whatever other investments you might have, that's worth something, right? Uh, 
you can include money that people owe you, right? If your friend owes you money and you haven't collected on it yet, technically that's, you know, an asset, right? Uh, you can, you know, talk about all of your possessions, like your computer, your clothes, your car, uh, anything else that you might have that's a value. Those are all of your assets, right? Then you will subtract out any liabilities that you have. So if you have credit card debt, if you have student loans, if you have auto loans, if you have money that you owe other people in general, like these are things that basically have to be subtracted out from the assets that you own to get to your net worth, right? So if I have a million dollars in assets, but I owe other people $500,000, then my net worth is actually only $500,000, right? So companies do kind of the same thing that I just went through. Um, with their balance sheet, right, which has three sections, okay? It's got an asset section, it's got a liability section, and it's got a stockholder's equity section. So if you subtract your liabilities from your assets, you actually get to your stockholder's equity. So this equation always has to balance, which is why it's called the balance sheet, okay? Um, and so the balance sheet gives you a snapshot of how much assets a company has versus how much liabilities it has, and then the difference become stockholders equity. So these three statements each provide a slightly different view, but together they give you a complete view of the financial health of a business, right? And so the reason why this is important for investment banking interviews is because every technical question that they could possibly ask you comes back to the three financial statements at its core foundation, okay? Whether it's what happens to each of the three financial statements, when a certain business transaction happens to how do you value a business using comparable companies analysis or precedent transactions, which both of those things require you to apply what's called a valuation multiple to various financial metrics on the financial statements, such as revenue or EBITDA or earnings per share, you know, or it could be even free cash flow, right? Depending on what multiple you're using. So that requires you to under understand the three statements to even if you want to do a discounted cash flow, a DCF right? For that, you have to be able to calculate the free cash flow, right? So you have to know how to flow your way down the income statement and also adjust for the cash flow items to get to the free cash flow calculation, right? Before you can discount that back to so understanding mergers and acquisitions, merger math, right? Where you have to combine two different income statements to calculate what's called accretion dilution, which means you're looking at whether the earnings per share for the business increased or decreased, right? To doing a leverage buyout where you need to calculate the free cash flow generation abilities of a company and how that impacts the company's capital structure, right? So none of these things are possible, by the way, if you don't have a very strong foundational understanding of the three financial statements. So before you start studying anything else for your technical interviews, make sure that you really learn the three financial statements inside out and understand all the major line items on them as well as their relationship with each other, okay? This will make your life a lot easier. And as you're going through the rest of your technical prep, it's going to save you a lot of time, okay? Because otherwise, we see a lot of students make the mistake of learning their uh, technical concepts out of order. Like they'll try to learn how to do a DCF or they'll try to learn how to do merger math before they have a solid understanding of the three financial statements. And that actually prevents them from be, being able to truly understand what's going on. Okay, so hopefully that helps you guys and that'll be it for today. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking for more customized advice that's tailored for your specific situation, then I invite you to book a free strategy session with our team at the link below. We'll talk to you soon.